Welcome to our section on the causes of obesity. The main factors that contribute to the development of obesity are genetics, hormones, environment, types of food, metabolism, socioeconomic, and sleep. Now there's no one gene that causes obesity, but some individuals are born with a natural tendency to store more fat and burn less energy. Their genetics impact their hormones and their metabolism. So these impact food choices, the drive for food, appetite, hunger, fat creation, and storage. Now we've talked a lot about the types of food that will contribute to poor health or weight gain. We have to think about how this could be based on the environment individual lives in. In many poor urban neighborhoods, there is limited access to fresh vegetables and many residents have to buy their groceries at convenience stores. So these are called food deserts. And in this image, the darker colors represent the greater number of food deserts. Now in some urban areas, there's actually an overabundance of food. This is, uh, these are called food swamps. So essentially they have limited options for fresh, whole, healthy food. Now our food environment is loaded with chemicals. About 10,000 make their way into our food. Some of, these can, uh, some of these chemicals are considered obesogens. And obesogens promote fat creation and fat storage. Obesogens may cause us to gain weight, but they actually don't have any calories. Sleep is now thought to be a cause or at least a contributing factor to the development of obesity. Now we need seven to nine hours of sleep a night. And when we don't get it, we are more likely to make poor choices, poor food choices. Um, and studies have shown that people who do not get enough sleep are more likely to be overweight or obese. As I mentioned before, it's rare that genetics are the sole cause of obesity, but about 70% of obesity is due to genetics. And there are two kind of key hormones I'm going to talk about in regards to energy balance, and that's insulin and cortisol. Insulin stimulates fat creation and fat storage. As we've talked about, Cortisol, our stress hormone, increases blood glucose and the release of insulin. Acute stress, or short-term stress, uh, in response to danger, which is part of our fight or flight response, will result in a cortisol release. Now, this will trigger the release of glucose, which gives us some quick energy. Now, chronic stress is that low-grade stress, that school and family and work, etc. Now, this also result, results in a cortisol release, um, but it's continuous. There's a constant release of glucose and insulin. Um, and then remember, insulin stimulates fat creation and fat storage. Now, we already talked about what happens with too much glucose and insulin insulin resistance, which in addition to driving weight gain is a precursor to diabetes. The thrifty gene theory attempts to explain why some populations gain so much fat in our cur current food environment of food abundance. The idea is that individuals with this gene variant will have an increased ability to store fat, to be sedentary and a diminished ability to use fat as fuel. NEAT is non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and it's a spontaneous unconscious activity which contributes to calorie expenditure. Examples of NEAT activities would be fidgeting, toe tapping, and pacing. And you can thank Dr. Levine shown in this picture for developing the walking desk which is a way to engage in NEAT.
And that's all for this section.